because of Christ in you. And because Christ is in you, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with. So now this is what we need to do every single day. Put on your new clothes that represent who you are, this new creation, spiritually and emotionally mature. Mm -hmm. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dear love, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. So we were talking a little bit, Joel, and then the very next verse, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. And if you want to know what the payoff of emotional and spiritual maturity is, it's peace. Immaturity yes. is going to lead you to the opposite yes. of peace. Lying, slandering, um, practicing all kinds of idolatry or, you know, making other things more important than God and even sexual immorality, that is not going to lead you to the peace that will comfort your heart, but it will lead to a, a disruption, yeah. a destruction really of all the, that's good within you. Mm -hmm. So we want peace and the way we can let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts is by putting on these new clothes. Yep. And if you think about it, think about when you go and buy clothes, okay? So if you're telling to put like clothe yourself with all of this, mm -hmm. when you go buy clothes, what's important? Let's just throw out a couple of things. What's important? You want to buy clothes that what? Fit. 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 Yeah. yeah. You want to buy clothes that fit. That you like. Yeah. And so it's okay for some of the different ways, the different personality types, the different wirings of people, it's okay if your compassion may look a little different than my compassion. Jim, you're uniquely wired mm -hmm. with incredible compassion and you're a therapist. So your garment of compassion is probably gonna look a little bit different than somebody else who has a different kind of career, right? right? Mm -hmm. So it's okay for your clothing to, you need to put it on as it fits you, yeah. but don't disqualify yourself. Like, oh, well, I, you know, I'm just a real practical person, or I'm just a real, you know, I'm, a, I'm like a bull in the china shop. I have no compassion. You can't say that because you're instructed here, you that. need to get some compassion, you need to put it on, and if you're putting on this garment of compassion, you can make it fit you, but you don't wanna walk out naked, absent <laughs> of compassion, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's another interesting thing about clothing? Well, are you going next? Because I have thoughts, but for one, for is I think the idea, it also for me reverses this, back to how many times are we gonna keep going back to Genesis 3? that when I found out I was now naked and ashamed, mm. I didn't go to the right tailor, right? I just grabbed whatever was near fig leaves to cover my inadequacy. And of course, we know God in the narrative says, for the first time mimicking Christ's sacrifice eventually, that there will be the shedding of the blood and cover yourself with animal skins. Yeah. So the idea in Ephesians 6, the, the spiritual warfare wardrobe that we can put on, that the clothing, by the way, we, you referenced real quick uh, the uh, passage in Romans 13, 14. I always do the second half of the verse. Well, the first half of the verse says what? Clothe yourselves in the Lord Jesus Christ first, then make a provision for the lust of the flesh. So good. Mm -hmm. Another thing about clothing is it's different seasons, you yeah. know, and, and so in the winter time, we don't put on shorts and t-shirts. In the wintertime, we put on coats, right? Mm -hmm. And so there are different seasons where you that's need good. your clothing yeah. needs to properly reflect that season. Mm -hmm. And that's true with us, and it's also true of people that we're interacting with. You know, if I'm interacting with someone who's in a devastating season, then I need a warmer sense of compassion for them. And, or if they're going through just typical everyday stuff, maybe my compassion can be a little more, you know, just like shorts and a t-shirt, you yeah, know, yeah. a little more casual, whatever. Mm -hmm. Another thing about clothing is you want to make sure that you've gauged where you're going to. So if you're going to an <laughs> official board meeting, right, you don't put on a, you know, gym shorts and, and tank top. You don't walk into a board meeting like that. 
So you want it to be appropriate for this setting that you're stepping into. So I find this notion of clothing, yeah. like we're very familiar with what it means to put on clothing. We know we have different styles for different times. We have different uh, seasons and all of this, but I think we can think of this in terms of compassion. But Joel, one of my favorite things that you've shared mm -hmm. is a deeper spiritual meaning of why are we putting on these clothes? And yeah. why is it referred to as clothe yourselves with all of these things? Yeah, so I think what's really um, intriguing about this is anytime you see repetition in scripture, there's a reason for it. You know, repetition always has reason. So when we look back to if he, uh, Colossians 2, uh, in verse 15, actually verse 15 sets up how to rightly understand the put to death and put on and, and all of this clothing language. This is what Colossians 2.15 says. He, which is Christ, disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. Now that word disarmed in Greek is actually related to the putting on or putting off of clothes. And so in the ancient Greek world, um, if a king or if a ruler had conquered an enemy, it would have been common practice to then parade that enemy in a royal procession, in a party, uh, in front of the entire people so that everybody knows that the king has come and he is victorious. And there would be the ceremony where the enemy would disrobe their royal kind of clothes uh, and put on a different type of clothing to identify their defeat. So I think this is intriguing because what then Paul does in Colossians 3 is he's saying, by the way, all of that emotional immaturity stuff, the um, immorality, the lying, the debauchery, all of that kind of stuff, that has been uh, conquered, it has been defeated by Christ on the cross and all the spiritual powers, the authorities and the rulers and the principalities have been disarmed and their final defeat, it's coming when Jesus will return. But as that has been disarmed, we can then take off of our old self and put on these new clothes. What are the new clothes? It's what you just said, Jim. It is the clothes of Christ himself and the clothes are marked by these things that Lisa had said in verse 12, Colossians 3, 12, put on then compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience.